Eric Warner, inspirational hero to kids everywhere, wants you to join him in an all-new animated family adventure. In this small town, a boy named Elliot is about to discover that when things look bad, it's time for some good teamwork. What can we do? Meet the Good Sports Gang. Oh my gosh, I couldn't take any more of that. So, now we know what uh, old Kurt is doing now that he's retired. Actually, I think that was probably made um, while he still was active in his career. Uh, but today, not really here to talk about Kurt. Here to talk about Kurt's former teammate, Beanie Wells. Um, the Beanie Wells debate has become a somewhat heated debate uh, for me, um, simply because, well, I'll just cover it all in this, in this video. A lot of people are expecting Beanie Wells to break out this year, and um, I do think it's a possibility. However, there are a lot of variables that I think people are overlooking that may prevent him um, from doing so. You watch this video, it's playing over my, uh, well, it's my right shoulder. But I, was, <laughs> I do know I right from my left. I just couldn't tell in the video. Like, let me turn off. Uh, these runs are incredible. The guy looks like a mini Adrian Peterson. Um, moves phenomenally for a guy that weighs 235 pounds. He shreds tackles. He gets into the secondary. And he's a nightmare. Uh, the guy has everything you'd want from a, a power back, a first and second down back um, with three down capabilities. Um... Here's my concerns. Number one, injuries. Limited, limited him last year in the beginning of the year. He was also um, an injury um, concern in college, so he does have an injury history. Number two, Tim Hightower. Uh, Tim Hightower isn't old. He's not some um, aging back that the Cardinals picked to... Um, you know, take over for Hightower. Hightower's only a year older, and he's a better receiver. So, he gets a lot of third down work. He caught over 60 passes last year, and uh, you know, in today's day and age, we're seeing PPR leagues increase in popularity. You know, those running back receptions are your bread and butter. Those are the, the points that your back gets if he doesn't score that week, help, uh, you know, him have a respectable week, or, you know, a great week if he is getting, you know, all the other touches. So there's my other concern. My next concern is everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people seem to be talking, well, Ken Wisenhunt loves to pound the ball. Ken loves to pound the ball. And he has been waiting to get back to the running game since his days in Pittsburgh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that may or may not be true. Um, the only way to find out is to ask Ken. And um, I can't seem to find his, his cell phone number. Um, I got a lot of phone numbers, so I can't find Ken. So I'm going to have to um, find that and ask him. But if you look at the numbers, um, in the last six years of the teams that he's coached or called the plays for, um, you will be able to see that the first years when he was the offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh, he did run the ball a lot. Um, but the last four years will show that the pass ratio to run ratio has made a complete 180 and that they pass the ball 60 times to 55% um, of the time. Now, I know you're thinking, well, no shit, they had Kurt Warner. Why wouldn't you pass the ball? Hey, I get that too, but I think we need to look a little deeper. Let's look at when he was in Pittsburgh. Let's consider that, okay, new offense coordinator. Let's keep it conservative, playing under a conservative coach, okay? And, uh, oh, we have a rookie quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. More reason to keep it conservative and pound the ball. Oh, and we have a number one defense, so we're just going to manage the clock. Pound it out, ground these teams out, run the ball a lot, win the game on defense and field position. Okay, makes a lot of sense. 
Um, if you want to see these actual numbers, what they what they roll out to, go to the Pyroma Pyro Pyromaniac, the Pyromaniac website. Did an article on it last week where you can see exactly how the numbers play out. So if you look at the next four years, um, I think the key is not to focus in on Warner so much, but at the points allowed um, as team defense. When he was coaching um, for the Steelers, they allowed um, you know two touchdowns or less per game, allowing them a lot of time to run the clock. But in his 30 years offensive coordinator and his three years in Arizona, the defenses have given up over 20 points a game. So it's sorry for kicking the camera. So it's really hard to run the ball when you're giving up three touchdowns a game. Um, so those that are expecting Beanie Wells to get upwards towards 300 carries, um, I just don't see it. I think he is a phenomenal player. I think he's a great player. I think that he has all the potential that everybody talks about. My only concern, the biggest concern that I have, and the reason that I think if Beanie Wells is held back this year, that it will be because of his lack of opportunity. He did not touch the ball more than 17 times um, last year in the rushing game. Um, so he did not have more than 17 carries in a single game last year at all, not once. So there may be some speculation or an assumption that he did touch the ball that many times. Can he handle a load bigger than that? Yeah, he could probably handle a load twice the size of that. Will he get it? I don't think so. Um, as far as receptions, we touched on that uh, with Tim Hightower. Uh, Beanie is a capable receiver. He actually averaged um, over 11 yards, almost 12 yards a reception last year. So that's, that's excellent. Um, I love seeing backs that can catch the ball. Will he get those opportunities? I think with Matt Leinhardt, um, the short dump-off passing game, um, I think he will. So that bodes well for Beanie. Um, they brought in Alan Fanica, so at least they are concerned about if they are going to run, they have a guy that is a very good run blocker. Um, he's not as good as pass blocking as he is run blocking, but um, he can still run block, so that, that's good for them. Um, the other thing working in Beanie's favor is their schedule. Their schedule is one of the easiest top five schedule against the run, so he's going to have great matchups every week. Um, one thing that may save Beanie uh, if he's not getting uh, the uh, enough carries every week to get the yardage totals, I think he is going to be relevant around the goal line. Tim Hightower can score um, around the goal line as well, so I think that um, Hightower will still get his fair share of carries, but I'd like to see. I, I'm looking to see Beanie get almost, you know, a two to one if I had to guess um, goal line carries. So can Beanie hit double digit touchdowns? Yeah, I think he can. Um, he had 176 carries last year. Um, the Cardinals, I think, if they increase their running game this year, maybe they increase it 100 carries. Um, I forget what the numbers were, but I, I don't think they. Um, actually, let me see. Yeah, last year they ran the ball 363 times. Um, so if they increase that 100, um, you'd have to think that at least half of those are going to Beanie, uh, maybe even 75. So at um, last year he averaged four and a half yards of carry. So if you do the math, that means that he's looking at an additional 225 to 400 yards. That puts him uh, barely above the uh, 1,000 to 1,200 yard, 1, yard range. Um, very respectable. Combine that with double digit touchdowns and uh, maybe he even gets in on the passing game in the 20 to 30 range. If he can do all that, he's poised for the breakout season that everyone's talking about. Um, so I, I definitely think he is capable of it. I actually have him in a keeper league and I hope he does because he's going to be my starting lineup every single week. So I'm not, um, not endorsing Beanie Wells. I'm just saying temper your expectations. Um, he is the kind of guy that if this goes well, and this goes well, and this goes well, then we're going to get the result that we um, we came to see. So um, where he's going in drafts, I think that he's a decent value. Uh, he's a late third round or fourth round pick. Um, I think that's fine, um, especially if you can get some good players later after that. Um, anything earlier than that, I'd have a hard time taking a guy with that many variables um, to produce a success. So got to keep it under 10 minutes, so let's uh, wrap it up. I want to thank you guys all for checking out the video. Um, if you have any questions, hit us up on Twitter at Pyromaniac with a number one seven I, or you can follow me at PyroLion on Twitter. So um, thank you guys once again. Hope you guys are enjoying all the videos and having as much fun watching them um, as I am putting them on. Um, holler at me later. Um, yeah, let's keep, keep it moving. Late.